So whenever Apple announces a new iPhone, there's normally a new processor, Apple Silicon we call it, and it uses a custom ARM-based CPU. And we've recently had the uh, A18 and the A18 Pro. In fact, Apple also has a line of processors for laptops and for desktops that you find in the MacBooks and so on, the M1, the M2, the M3, and now the M4. And they also use a custom ARM-based CPU. Qualcomm recently launched the Snapdragon 8 Elite with a custom ARM-based CPU, and previously it launched the Snapdragon X Elite with a custom ARM-based CPU. So the key word in all of that there was custom ARM-based CPU. What on earth is a custom ARM-based CPU? Well, that's what this video is all about. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive into the very interesting world of custom ARM CPU cores. So before we look at custom ARM CPU cores, let's work out what an ARM CPU core is, not a custom one, an ARM one. So ARM CPUs can be found almost everywhere from custom electronics uh, with embedded microcontrollers to feature phones from the 1990s to smartphones of today to laptops, even supercomputers, ARM CPUs are inescapable. On uh, November 27th, 1990, Advanced Risk Machines, ARM look, was spun out of Acorn Computers with a mission to create a global microprocessor standard, which it has certainly done. By 2021, so quite a few years later, 200 billion chips had been shipped with ARM CPU cores. ARM no longer stands for Advanced Risk Machines, but the company's ethos remains the same. And yes, it is ARM with a big A and a small RM. In 2017, the company rebranded. Officially, it is now ARM, all lowercase for the logo, and with a capital A when used in text. So versions of the ARM ISA ending with a dash A. So you had, uh, this is because it's application processor rather than microcontroller. You had ARM V6 from uh, 2001 that was used in uh, the original iPhone. You find it in the Raspberry Pi 1. You find it in the Raspberry Pi 0. There was ARM V7, which was the major 32-bit version, which was used in smartphones uh, until 2015 for uh, Android, 2013 for iPhone, so quite a long number of years when we were using ARM v7 32 bit. Then we had ARM v8 came along, that's the 64 bit version, it does have an optional 32 bit mode. And now we're on ARM v9, the latest iteration, it's a 64 bit version only of the ARM uh, architecture, uh, no 32 bit mode. Now the ARM Cortex A series, uh, starting with ARM V7, I won't go through all of them, but this is the list of the chips that ARM itself makes. And you can see they've been used in the iPhones, they've been used in uh, Android smartphones, they've been used in chips from Qualcomm, chips from Samsung. And then we had a similar story when we moved up to ARM V8. Again, I won't go through all the list here. Uh, back to 2012, the first kind of 64-bit ones, right up to 2020 when we had the Cortex A78, uh, different cores. And so these have all been ARM-designed cores designed by the company called ARM, by their engineers, and then they licensed those cores to people like Qualcomm or Samsung or whoever, MediaTek, so they can build uh, processors using a CPU, GPU, the camera stuff and so on uh, around that. And then we moved on to ARM v9. Starting in 2021, we had uh, the first set of ARM v9 cores from ARM. And then this year, of course, we had the Cortex-A725 along with the X925. So first off, we have the new ARM X925 CPU. Just mentioning the X series, they basically have, you know, prime cores, performance cores and efficiency cores. Uh, the 500 series, really the 700 series, and now it was the X series. Um, and so here again are the different ones starting in 2020. I've got videos about all these chips that I've covered here on this channel. If you ever want to go back and look at any of those, what is the Cortex-X925? Well, I've got a video about it that I released just a few months ago. So you can find all that stuff here on this channel. I'm not going to stay on it now because that's not the reason why we're here today. Why we are here today is because of the way ARM licenses work. There are two types of ARM license. Core licenses allows you to take a specific off-the-shelf processor, like I just said, the Cortex-X925, and incorporate that 
uh, into your CPU. You can maybe change the amount of cache. You can maybe change some very, very tiny things about it. But basically that core design is that's what you want. OK, you want a bigger L2 cache, fine, you can put that in there. They give you a range. What what do you want to order? What bit do you want? And you can do that. But basically, you take the object. You can't you can't change the interior design of it. You can't modify it. You can't create your new C, a new CPU based on that design. There's also a thing called an architectural license, which allows for the design of custom processor cores that are based on a particular instruction set architecture. And this is important because you license the right to build an ARM v7 processor, or you license the right to build an ARM v8 processor, or you license the right to build an ARM v9 processor. And this is what part of the current legal uh, dispute between ARM and Qualcomm is because about where do they have these licenses, these architectural licenses, and which version of the architecture are they allowed to use with that license? So ARM doesn't grant very many architectural licenses. It, it would prefer there to be core licenses. You want to buy a Cortex X925, fine, come to ARM, sign the paperwork, and, and you get it. However, there are uh, people that do have them. Custom processor cores can take years to design. We'll see here in a minute uh, how long it can take. We're talking two, three, four years. Uh, and it requires a whole team of people to do it, and it won't necessarily be successful. Again, we'll look at some of those uh, very quickly. But if successful, the architectural licensee can sell custom ARM processor cores uh, for use in those companies' products. Processors designed under an architectural license need to pass a conformity test to ensure the CPU is 100% compatible with the ARM ISA. So there's no adding in, you know, uh, special ways of doing this or special ways of doing that as part of the ARM architecture you've got to pass this test do you can you run this arm software on it yes you can now of course every processor has got a different gpu a different 5g modem or a different bus or a different whatever so it's not it doesn't mean everything is universal in terms of hardware but it doesn't mean in terms of the cpu core now arm cpus designed by others include significantly the apple a series of processors for the iphone starting with the a7 we'll look at that in a moment and the apple m series of processors for the mac so basically apple has been a a trailblazer in designing its own ARM-based CPU cores, ARM v8 and ARM v9, which you find in both smartphones and in laptops and in desktops. Qualcomm has the Snapdragon X Elite and the Snapdragon 8 Elite, so that's for smartphones and for laptops. So again, they are trying to do a similar thing that what Apple does, designing its own CPU cores for a range of different um, products. And also companies like Samsung and Nvidia have architectural licenses and have designed custom cores in the past. We'll talk about that in a moment, as have several server chip companies. So a custom ARM core is a CPU core not designed by ARM, not based on an actual ARM design. It's clean room, but it's 100% compatible. So basically, you can say, I want to make a chip that is 100% compatible with the ARM architecture but I'm not going to use arms when I'm going to design it myself with my own engineers. I'm going to manufacture it myself. I'm going to do everything myself. And then I need a license from arm to do that. So let's look at Apple. Apple's first custom arm based processor was the A7. The brand new system on a chip from Apple called A7. A7 is 64 bit. This is the first ever in a phone of any kind. I don't think the other guys are even talking about it yet. <laughs> that first appeared in the iPhone 5S in 2013. And it was the first uh, custom ARM V8 uh, SOC. In fact, it was the first ARM V8 SOC for smartphones or tablets, period. It came out before anybody else uh, used ARM's design for their uh, chips. There's a whole bunch of things that happened in the past about that. That's a little interesting uh, history, but we won't go into that today. And ARM continues to design its own ARM V8 processors and did so right up to and including the A17 Pro. And as a kind of a comparison, the A7 had a billion transistors. The A17 Pro had 19 billion transistors. A17 Pro features 19 billion of these transistors. So you can see a lot of effort and engineering went in over those years uh, as they progressed up the line. Now, ARM's first ARM V9 smartphone processor was the A18 and the A18 Pro. And ARM's M range of laptops started with the ARM V8 M1, but the ARM M4 
is its first ARM v9 laptop desktop processor. So Apple has transitioned from uh, ARM v8 over to ARM v9 with its latest processors. Now, interestingly enough, Qualcomm's first custom-based CPU was an ARM v7 uh, processor core called the Scorpion core back in uh, 2008, and it was used in the Snapdragon S series. So Qualcomm does have a history going right back to the 32-bit era where it was designing its own custom cores. Its first processor with an ARM V8 core was the Snapdragon 820 with the custom Cryo core. That was 2015. So again, it moved from RV7 up to ARM V8. And then 2021, Qualcomm bought Nuvia, a chip design company started by ex-Apple chip designers. Uh, and they bought it basically for that reason. I would like to welcome on stage Gerard Williams, which is the head of our CPU design team. And this led to the 64-bit ARM V8 Orion cores found in the Snapdragon X laptop series. And we've covered that a lot here on the channel. I've covered that a lot here on this channel. And now we've just seen the second generation of Orion CPU cores. Today, we're announcing the second generation Qualcomm Orion CPU. Uh, that are used in the Snapdragon X Elite. The key point is here is these are ARM V8 cores. And that's because Qualcomm does not currently have an ARM V9 license. When it bought Nuvia, it's the legal dispute is, was it able to use Nuvia's ARM V8 license and then transfer it over? Or was it covered by its own ARM V8 license, which it's had since, you know, at least 2015, because it was it built the ARM V8 Snapdragon 820 with that cryo core. Qualcomm have one opinion, ARM have another opinion, and it basically it's going to be up to uh, a judge to settle that unless they settle themselves out of court beforehand. Now, other people that have ARM cores, NVIDIA has a series of ARM V8 cores, including the Denver, the Denver 2, uh, and the Carmel. At the moment, they don't seem to be designing any custom cores, but who knows? They seem to be happy using ARM's Neoverse uh, processors in their uh, big chips that they're using inside of all this AI training and all these AI supercomputers that they're building. Uh, Samsung made several ARM V8 custom cores for its Exynos processors, starting with the M1, M standing for Mongoose. That was in 2016, ended in 2020. So here's an example, not necessarily of a failure, I mean, because they did ship five generations of this chip in actual smartphones, in, in customers' hands, but it just shows you how difficult it is to keep that going uh, and to come out on top, because ultimately Samsung decided it wasn't getting a competitive edge basically considering how much money it was spending and how much time it was investing in that it wasn't getting the edge it wanted. So it discontinued that. Uh, and there are several server companies that have made custom ARM V8 CPU cores, including uh, the Thunder X core from Cavium or Marvell, depending on who owned who at what particular moment. So as you can see, there's a rich history here of uh, custom cores. Okay, so there you have it. Custom ARM-based CPUs from Apple, Qualcomm, Samsung, Nvidia, and so on. Love to hear your thoughts about custom cores in the comments below. Do you think Samsung should revive its uh, custom core program? What about AMD? Should it get involved? What about Intel? Should Intel be doing this? Uh, what are you expecting more from Nvidia in the future? And so on. Love to hear your thoughts. It's a real good point of discussion. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.